up some some side conversation. So Jessica's officially launched the recording. So as stated earlier, this is going to be recorded. Uh, we'll post it on our YouTube channel um, and Jessica will circulate the links out after the fact. So doesn't mean don't pay attention during the presentation, but if you miss something, um, we'll be good to go. All right, so let's start this party. I'm going to, we're gonna to try to do a little more interactive this time. So there'll be some, Put this share. Jessica, you good there? Now we go. Okay, we got my screen. All right. So there will be some interactive where I'm going to bounce back and forth between some tools, some web pages, and I mean, hopefully that all goes smoothly. Um, but it should be pretty lively here. We're up to about 70, 80 people. So let's start the party now and just get going because all of you were timely. So uh, this is part of our monthly education session. Uh, this session today is for both members and non-members. Uh, we'll kind of talk about what that means in a second, but so I'm John Norris. Um, I've been with Promo Standards since the beginning. Uh, this is part of our kind of Promo Standards University. So every, what is this thing? Every third Tuesday of the month, we run education sessions. I will say of the 12 education sessions this year that are already scheduled, 10 of them are for members only. Uh, two of them are open to the public, being the one in February and this one. Our goal here is to you know, try to keep the wider community and participants up to date with what's going on in Promo Standards land. So um, that's that. All right, so real quick, uh, if, if you've been at any Promo Standards presentation, you probably can recite this yourselves. But one thing that's important that we remember here is our mission. So the Promo Standards mission is uh, that we collaborate to create industry leading open standards. That's always, that's a huge piece of our uh, mission this year is the open standards portion that enable industry participants to improve customer experience, reduce transaction friction, and effectively execute the digital strategy, right? So we are, we are a 501c6, non-for-profit, none of us are getting paid uh, from a board and volunteer standpoint. So it's very important that, you know, when we talk membership and talk these things at the end of the day we're funding the the organization that's creating and driving these standards but at the end of the day we always come back to anything we do as an organization does it come back and meet our mission uh it's very important that we maintain this level of openness and be able to drive our standards forward so um so far so good uh, this is our fourth official year of being a not-for-profit so it's good times um, all right, one thing, so I've, and play along here, I've tried to, since there will be links and I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth. Um, I saw this from Eric Granada in a giant presentation one time where he just, you know, pasted all of his links from the form of QR codes. So I promise I'm not spamming you any of these QR codes today. But what I'm gonna try to do is as we go through content, there will be some random QR codes. Basically, if you're sitting there um, and that way I don't have to post links in the chat the whole time. Um, so if you see these QR codes, it's basically linking to the pages that I'm referring to. So at any given point, you can always whip out your phone, play along, uh, you know, try it out yourself. Uh, just kind of keep yourself entertained here. But one of the big initiatives that Promoters has launched in the last two months is, you know, really driving home this sense of, you know, that Promo Standards is the leading integration standard for the industry. So we've started this campaign that's been very successful. We already have 50 um, industry firms who have signed on to the statement. Pretty much, you know, it's what we're calling it, we standardize on promo standards. Um, and it's all of our pledge that promo standards, open standards are our preferred system integration method for the promotion products industry. So as you see, it's a sample of, you know, less than half the co uh, companies who have signed on in the early stages. Our goal is to reach out to the wider, um, community of Promo Standards membership and then the industry as a whole. Uh, I think it's important that we have a you know, unified message to the industry and really hammer out any shadow of a doubt if there's any concerns of, you know, that Promo Standards is the dominant and leading open standard for the industry. So if you want to hop on board with us, um, the other 52 companies as of this morning that have signed on in the first week or so, uh, hit this QR code. Uh, if you're in Slack, I'll make sure I post this link too as well. 
but this is really a you know shine a real show of solidarity here uh, for the Bronx Sanders community. So obviously you probably recognize you know all of these names to the right, you know, representing I don't know, call it ten to fifteen billion dollars of commercial product sales a year. So NBD. Um, I swear the commercials will end soon. For those of you who are eagerly awaiting, hopefully in the next five-ish days, uh, we will launch pre-registration for our technology summit and hackathon. Um, it, we do anticipate it being a sold out event and we're gonna roll out registration to members first and then to the wider community. So all the more reason to become a member if you're not. But what this is, this is our you know, premier in-person networking and education event uh, for the year. You know, I th we think as, you know, some people ask why is Promo Standards getting into the education realm? We think it really meets our mission uh, to you know, honing around supply chain efficiencies and executing uh, digital strategy. So you'll see us being more actively involved in you know, in-person events throughout the year as the industry has you know, really rebooted everything in this past three to four months. So we are going to Tampa, uh, the second to the fifth. So that's a Sunday to a Wednesday. We're gonna have a hackathon for the first day and a half. And then we're gonna get everybody together. And then we're gonna have a more traditional, um, both dual track education event where it'll be, you know, you're, you know, very much IT industry related IT um, content, as well as some business crossover content at the same time will be working into that how promo standards, you know, a separate track for promo standards related heavy content. So kind of going to meet everybody's needs all at once, but it will be um, for those of us who live in um, not the best climates of the world in Buffalo, New York, we uh, are very much looking forward to getting to a nice sunny spot on the water in, in uh, October. So going to Tampa, it'd be a good time. Make sure you sign up. So like I said, check your emails in Slack starting next week. Um, we anticipate or I'll launch that weapon. And you know, part of our thing is we wanna make it fun. We wanna make it entertaining. If you're gonna get on, go to uh, Tampa. So you know, we've rented out some pretty cool venues that are gonna allow us to you know, really hone on on the rebuilding, the networking and you know, just the friendships and community uh, that we've really thrived on over in the past. So just look forward to that. All right, bang, bang, let's get this going here uh, while you all showed up. So basically what we wanna cover today is we wanna hit on a few things. We wanna talk about uh, a little bit on membership and kind of why you should become a member. I think it's important. Both there's the supporting the organization, but there's what you get out of it, which is most important to you. Um, I'm going to kind of run through this presentation, assuming that you know some of you are you know what promo standards is, uh, but you don't know really what it is, right? So we're going to walk through the tools and resources that promo standards has to offer. We're going to talk about credentialing because there's been a lot of changes in the last. 90 days around the concept of credentialing, uh, some features that we got rid of and brought back. So that'll be welcome. Uh, we're gonna go through a, kind of on the getting started paces. What's the best way to, we get this question a lot. What does this data look like? What are the responses? What, are, what, what am I expected to put in these fields? So we're gonna run through some live examples. Hopefully that works. And then we're gonna wrap this up on some best practices. So for those of you who don't know, Aaron Anderson from Alpha Broder heads up our best practices committee, and they've been doing some pretty awesome things in terms of trying to rein in the beast, right? There's 500 different entities that are playing with these standards at various levels, and we are relying on the best practices committee to provide guidance to ensure that the standards are being utilized uh, in the most ideal way so that we're not creating 500 different implementations out there. So that's a thing and we're gonna talk about that. Um, real quick, uh, I think it's very important, you know, as I said earlier, we are a not-for-profit. We do rely on membership and that's our only source of funding. Our educational events throughout the year are break-even events. We, we very much, want to show the value of these events. We're not in this to make money on, you know, some sort of elaborate um, event, but we want to make sure we're adding the, you know, the value and everybody's getting the proper resources out of it. So we have three different levels of membership. 
uh, advisory members, adopting associates. So basically for $500 a year, you can get your foot in the door, have a say, get involved in our Slack community. Uh, and you kind of read those benefits there as you go. But as you move up the tiers, they kind of slide up in both involvement, the adopting member really gets you to us, be able to serve on committees. Committees are the lifeblood of promo standards. They're doing the heavy lift in terms of creating the standards or creating the guidance around the standards or creating our marketing and education materials. I serve on the mar membership marketing and education committee that actually runs from Facilis. So, you know, it's a, if you're looking to get involved in the industry, uh, I don't think we've ever said no to volunteers. We're more of the voluntold uh, mentality. So we'd love more volunteers. And then the uh, top level, their advisory members, they're the ones who are voting on our bylaws, voting on our uh, standards, ratifying standards, and proposing and drafting new standards. So you can read that as you go. Um, and then look, if at the end of the day, you're like, uh, you know, I don't need all this. I don't want to be involved. Uh, we do have a tier where you can free ride. You can, you know, get access to our endpoints. But the biggest thing at the end of the day, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, is, um, you know, why we're doing this whole login and things behind a, a you know, login wall. Um, it really comes down to the, you know, security of the standards and the licensing themselves. So, uh, real quick, some of the stuff I just said, I think one of the biggest selling features that never was intended to be this way, but it kind of has taken on a life of its own. I've referred to it probably 20 times already. We have 268 industry technologists and business leaders who are living in a Slack community. So essentially, if I want to talk to, I would say any, you know, there's 50 to 60 distributors that I can get a hold of in a split second by just hitting them up in our Slack channel. Same thing with suppliers there. They're constantly there. It's really the hub to get your tech questions answered and your promo standards questions answered and to really find that person in it that you're trying to get a hold of. So I used to say, you know, email your sales rep and try to find who that technologist is. Now you say, look, get involved in our Slack community. You want to find somebody direct you if you want to direct message me direct message eric direct message any of our board members they're all there so just hit them up um obviously becoming a member gets you access to standards right it's kind of a big deal um you know we believe that our members have the most to benefit because you know they're the lifeblood of the organization and we want to make sure that we're driving that value um ability to contribute we went through that like volunteer, uh, like we're all volunteer, nobody's getting paid here. Um, another member benefit, you get early access to our events, right? So next week we're sending out pre-registration to our members only. Um, you know, if that sells out in the first few weeks, the members only, it is what it is. Um, and then education, you know, we very much uh, have engaged and are a part of this open community. But at the end of the day, there's also things that, you know, we like to keep in house to make sure that we're, ensuring that the you know few hundred entities that are already a member are you know getting service and getting what they need um and at the end of the day look that is the best opportunity to network with industry peers so back to my qr code uh if you want to hit that up that's the application um to become a member so one shout out she's on the call here lurking in the shadows she pulls all the bells whistles and really you know i call it herding cats um, trying to get a few hundred technologists uh, to do the same thing, have the right directions, if next to impossible. But Jessica's our admin. Hit her up at admin at promostandards.org anytime. She's super quick about getting back to you with questions. Um, it's a lot more friendly than, you know, deal with us sometimes. So she's a great resource. Hit her up and uh, she'll help you out. And she'll get you pointed in the right direction for membership. Um, I alluded to this earlier, why the login? And, you know, we... We're very much an open community, but at the end of the day, we realize we are protecting a standard and we are protecting, um, you know, it's kind of getting into the weeds here. We have a, an end user licensing agreement. At the end of the day, we just want to make sure that all of these entities who are putting time and resources into these standards understand their rights and, you know, their abilities to use them and you know, what happens if you co copy them. So this was a big deal. Um, Mike Napper from Samar led this initiative to ensure that we're all protecting our own entities and we're protecting the standards themselves. So it's a bunch of legal stuff, but at the end of the day, I think it makes us a much better organization. We're all feel confident that the standards are being you know, protected in the long run. All right, so 
we're going to go through a bunch of kind of I, these are questions that happen all the time, right? People are like, hey, where where do I find the standards? Where do I find the endpoints? Who has what? How do I get credentials? So I'm going to go through kind of a series of questions here. And we're going to try to answer as many questions and get as many nuggets and insights out of it as we go. So um, stick with us here. Uh, we hope to hope this goes smooth. But you know, I'm going to walk through these and get you all kind of uh, live sharing as we go. So let's try this thing here. So um, back to the we standardize and program. So right, once you log in to the old promo standards website, uh, you get this whole host of menu options that you didn't get before. So there's a member section, but we want to focus on this resources section. So resources here has our list of endpoints. This is what suppliers have, what services and what their links are. Right now there's 1,500-ish endpoints posted. Uh, it can be a bit intimidating, but we're gonna dial back that intimidation factor for you throughout today. Uh, make sure it's not crazy. Um, we'll go through you know, some of these other tools. There's some really awesome things that if you haven't done our validation tool, we're gonna get into that as well. Um, so when you click on Promo standards endpoints, that's gonna bring you to this page, yes. So what we get this question a lot, uh, what services are available? Uh, what's their cycle? Which one should I do? So ProSearch keeps an entire listing of all of our services deprecated or not. Uh, last week, I had a few questions of what's the life cycle and when, when do we deprecate and when do we sunset an existing um, endpoint, which is tough, right? Uh, there are still six people lurking out there with inventory 1.0. It's broken, but they still have it. Uh, but the, our basic model is we want to support both the current model, the current version, and the one behind it, right? So you'll see our versioning as we go through. We try to deprecate versions as they get, you know, three versions behind or two versions behind. Some things like media 1.0 was just broken in the first place, but we leave them up there just as a matter of context. And once we you know, get past them, we'll keep deprecating them. But basically it shows you every single service we have. There's quite a bit. You know, inventory is kind of in its third iteration here. Um, you know, as we go through product data, obviously I did a whole separate section or there's one coming up on product data 2.0. I did one last year, I think. So we try to focus in on these and the members, the members only education of what these things are. So, you know, you come to this, you know, off the main ProSeric site, you get the whole listing, good to go. You can view the actual standards, download the whistles. Uh, inventory has some developer toolkits, uh, kind of, you know, get you to the party here. So, you know, this is you know, as simple as it sounds. I think a lot of people sometimes run into problems having, uh, being able to find things. So back to this resources, um, I guess the next question is, you know, that was the whole service documentation, right? That's what services the promo standards have to offer. And the next one is who has what, right? So then we can go to the endpoints themselves. Um, this is important. This is where I said there are 1500 plus endpoints that are out there. Um, this is just allows you, let me use Starline as an example because I can. Um, it allows you to really find any supplier, right? So if you're looking for Gemline, um, you know, any Sandmar, they're all in here, right? So all of your known suppliers that are in here, you can see what suppliers offer what services. You can search by, you know, only invoice services, right? So it's a great way for you to, you know, look at the endpoints and in fact, the star line here. Uh, oddly enough, I get this question a lot is, you know, people come to me and start like, hey, well, what, what endpoints do you offer, right? And what versions? Well, I always just point them to this page here and like go to this page and type in Starline. And then once you get to this point, you can kind of see what my production status is. I have live URLs, test URLs, and all these pieces back here. So <clears throat> as simple as it sounds, there are 1,500 uh, endpoints alphabetically listed with pretty easy search abilities. And you can always check here kind of their statuses. Uh, some people will, if they're not fully vetted in terms of their data, in terms of their kind of experience promo standards, they'll leave their statuses in review or leave their statuses, you know, kind of my general, so Starline, I don't know if we have any in review. 
So if we ever have a uh, like beta or alpha service out there, we won't put it in production here. So we'll leave it in review, but it's a great way to just kind of look at the statuses. So that's there, pretty simple, uh, nothing crazy there. Let's go back to, let's make sure we're not missing anything. All right, so we do, now we found the standards, we've gone through the endpoints. And this is the next question. So how do I get contact data? Um, so outside of Slack, we always get asked, how do I find who, like, who to talk to at Starline, right? So we'll use Starline as an example because we can. Um, there is a member directory that also has the search and you can find after you log in, most importantly, this is behind the login, no, nothing's for free except for your login. Uh, you can come into your member directory and then as you see, there's this contact role search here. So a lot of times what happens is your development team or whoever you're working with gets stuck. They're like, who do I talk to at start on? Who's the, like, nobody wants to talk to the salesperson. Nobody wants to talk to, you know, the CEO. They want to talk to who's the guy or girl or person that can really get me the technical answers I need. So We've so Promo Center has added this concept of technical contact. So you can see right under the technical contact section that will filter each company's contacts for the technical person. And then you can get their email address and their contact information by just clicking on their name. Um, a lot of those questions that we get are very supplier, distributor, or service provider related. So if I have a problem with HITS data, you should probably talk to HIT. You know, Jessica can point you in the right direction of who the person to talk to is. But at the end of the day, if you just come right to the member directory, search hit, filter on their technical contacts and fire them all off an email, they're gonna get back to you. Um, so that's kind of one of the value. I mean, there's, I think 450 people in this member directory in terms of individual contacts. Um, those who are people who are actual members. So this exists, but the big part, we just added this technical contact feature and that will save you a lot of time of going through whatever channels you might have uh, to get that information. So, all right, we're doing good there. So that's just that information. All right, this is important. This is just changed, been added, whatever you wanna call it. And I'll probably pop out here and show you in live, but um, so right here. So start on 10 point listing. So the old, those of you OG, promo standards people on our old site, we had this feature where you could request credentials. And um, we were kind of rushed when we ported things over and left it behind and realized after the fact, we probably shouldn't have left it behind. So um, really before you can get started, if you're looking to access a supplier uh, or service providers data, you're gonna to have to get credentials, right? Now I'm gonna show you in a second. And then we'll obviously transition this to the supplier side. This matters on the supplier side because you're gonna wonder why do I get these emails? Uh, and who's sending me these emails for uh, asking for credentials. So taking two steps back, Promo Standards does not want to get in this right now. We, it's not part of our mission to be in the credentialing game. We obviously realize that there is a credentialing scale problem for the you know, one to many people, like the service providers have a very uh, big bone to pick with credentialing. But we do not, as an organization, issue credentials. We don't touch credentials. We don't want anything to do really with credentials because that's really between the two trading parties. So call it supplier to service provider, supplier to distributor, distributor to service provider. That's everybody's problem to figure out. But what we do is we kind of do the matchmaking side of it. So as I'm logged in here as myself, it's going to kind of be awkward. So if I wanted to go to hit and then take their order status and ask for credentials, I just click on the little red icon for credentials, come in here, fill out my name. We had some industry identification fields and then you put whatever you want in here and then you submit this credential. So what this will do is Promo Standards knows the people at HIT who handle credentialing. So I'll submit this and what's gonna happen is, sorry Raj, you're getting an email here. Um, that will go to the fine folks at HIT and we'll go back to my, So what that does is back to this PowerPoint slide. We found that some of these were going into an abyss or creating rando tickets in people's systems. So basically what happens now is you as the requester over here on the bottom right, you get an email saying, 
I've that you've requested these credentials because what was happening is I think uh, some of the guys at Antera a few weeks back were like, hey, is anybody getting these? Who's getting these? So now we pretty much say, hey, you know, we, we've processed your request. Uh, we sent it to me. We sent it to you, Fane. We sent it to Rob, right? Um, or, and then on the other side of it, I call it hits now going to get this email saying, John has requested access to your, your endpoints. Now, from here out, Promo Standards is pretty hands off. What we now expect is hopefully um, Raj or whoever at HIT is going to respond to you directly to your email address and say, hey, I uh, got your credentials, here's your stuff, here's, here's how I can help you on boarding. At that point, it's really up to the individual relationships to take over because we just don't feel like it's really in our best interest to house thousands and thousands of sets of credentials because I guess, A, we don't want the responsibility and they're just changing so often and that's really not our cup of tea or really part of our mission. So, you know, obviously there are OAuth, there are single sign-on solutions that we are very much exploring, but for right now, this is the process. So important uh, to get there. Um, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts. Um, so, and if you're new, uh, if you've been to any presentation I've done, you've seen this thing a million times, but you know, at the end of the day, what are the services that are available? Oops, back to here. So up top, you know, we have eight core services. And these are the, you know, we're very big on abbreviations, but obviously order status, inventory, order status, order ship notification, right? That's our, our core services, our quick ROIs. Then we really have those product data related services, which is product data, product media, which is your images, files, all that fun stuff. And uh, the beast that we call PPC, product price configuration, we'll get to in a second, uh, and then purchase orders and invoices. So, you know, which ones should I do first? That's a very valid question. Um, and I think it really comes down to ROI. So I kind of broke them down and my take on this has changed recently. Um, I used to have product pricing configuration up into this like second tier. But basically, look, there's one easy, I call it easy, quick bang for your buck ROI right out of the gate. You know, this top tier of inventory or status ownership notifications. That's the first three pieces on that, that circle there. These are the ones that have huge adoption rates, low variances in data availability, right? Uh, at the end of the day, inventory has products, products have some sort of variant, call them colors or sizes, and they have an inventory quantity. Now, yes, we can get into the complexities of inventory has avail future available dates and warehouses. Uh, thank you, apparel suppliers. And we handle that. But at the end of the day, there's easy stuff and quick wins out here. For those of you distributors who obviously are scaling your businesses and trying not to scale it with humans, um, order status is a huge quick way to stop the phone calls, stop the emails. And the email traffic in this industry has, yes, it has replaced the phone traffic, but the email traffic is bonkers. Uh, so these, that between order status and ownership notification, this is the quick wins, real quick wins uh, to kind of more of your order automation supply you know, side, of, you know, for those of you who have a dashboard of the thousand orders you have outstanding at any given time, it really sucks having to manually call on them at any given time and hope that your suppliers come in through. Uh, and then suppliers on the flip side, you're good here on the back side of the emails and the phone calls. So we all have a vested interest in solving this. Uh, this next tier, and this is where I've kind of moved things. I've moved invoices into here. I've been a long proponent of invoices. Um, the invoice vouching process in this industry sucks. Uh, the fact that everybody's trying to match invoices, none of them match, and people are just eating it whenever there's a variance or making a phone call, doing that whole process to try to figure out the variances. <clears throat> this, the invoice service is easy in terms of low hanging fruit to, if you're vouching manually or paying somebody in a country 9,000 miles away to vouch for you, um, there's quick, easy wins out of that service. Um, Product Data 2.0 and Product Media kind of go along. Distributor Central, the fine folks over there, recently onboarded 150 to 160, some crazy amount of supplier endpoints that are Product Data and Product Media. So there are currently 300 plus suppliers data that's in Product 2.0. 
So talk, we're talking north of eight, 900,000 SKUs that are sitting in these services available today. So I think there is a lot of quick data wins with these services. Um, so probably 2.0, why I put that up here is it obviously has the pricing components along with it that product 1.0 does not have. Product media is just all your images, but product 2.0 has your basic images as well. Um, and for those of you who are questioning, you know, what does he mean by this has images and doesn't, as we get through education sessions, I hone in on individual services and kind of go through the thought processes and the logic behind all of them. Um, moving forward here, and the last tier, to do right now, the biggest chatter out there in Promo Center's world is the concept of configured purchase order versus simple purchase order. And what's the fine line between the community very much wants to send through a simple purchase order that works configured-ish. So what that means is product price configuration is the full bore you know, pricing model, the, you know, building components, building decorations, it, every possible combination you can think of, product pricing configuration handles that. And that flows into a fully configured purchase order. But the community is trying to skip PPC and just go right to the purchase order. And the pushback is what's the bare minimum where a service provider or supplier can get out of that purchase order. So. I know Aaron and his crew and the best practices committee are very much engaged in this conversation to try to help solve that as well, because it's, I'm a believer that with product data 2.0 and a little bit of help from product pricing configuration, you can send me a pretty damn close purchase order. But I would also like you to send me a 100% close purchase order by using my product price configuration service. So back to where we started from, they're there for a reason. They're in that bottom tier because they're not a slam dunk. Uh, you're gonna have to have some kind of knowledge of your processes to get them done. But the holy land, the promised land, whatever you wanna call it, um, uh, holy grail, you know, it was essence big thing for a decade. Um, they're there, they're available and they work. Right, we have days at Starline where we process more more sales volume through our purchase order service than we do manually through our inboxes, email inboxes. So, uh, next question here, and I'm going to hit on this for five minutes because I think it's a good tool for those of you who are getting started who have that question: like, what data do I get from these? And you don't have to be a rocket scientist; you don't have to be a developer to really play with some of these tools. So, the QR code links to this validator. So, Promo Standards has a web service validation tool where what its initial intent was to ensure that suppliers are following the standards. So we validate the requests and response, mainly the requests and the data structures and kick back if it's valid or not. What that has turned into is it's turned into a glorified data processing and data you know, exploratory tool uh, which is great. Uh, I think anything you get more ROI from, the better. So let's see if I can choose that. So I just want to walk through an example because I think it's important that everybody sees how this works. Uh, so this tool exists. It's you know back on the link, and which I'll share back up there in a second. So basically what you have to do is you have to come through and pick one of the active services pick the version for that service and then pick one of the operations, right? So every web service, every service we have. And this is, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, just check the documentation, it's in there. And then you pretty much put in, so I'm gonna use Starline's data because I have access to it. Um, you put in the endpoint that you're trying to connect. This is Starline's inventory 2.0 service. And then you come into, and what well, looks ominous, you get this request body. But for those of you who've used this, you realize how easy this is. Essentially, all you have to do is fill out this parameter. You just type in the web service version. And what you're doing is you're building out the request. So this gives you a quick sandbox environment to come in, get a request, get a, you know, so back to my credentials. So if Raj wrote me back and gave me his credentials, he's gonna give me a user ID and a password. Uh, for those of you who are, you know, messing around and or this demo password was gonna change in about 25 minutes, so do the damage you want to now on my test account. And then, uh, you know, I'm changing it soon. So you put in that and then you put in a product ID, right? 
And then you come down here, you hit validate, and that kicks back this entire response over here to see what the example data would be. So you know, obviously this is kind of ominous, but the first thing I do when I get this is I copy this response. I open up my old trusty notepad plus plus. I put it into notepad plus plus, all a million lines of it. And now I get it and convert it to XML, something that I can use. So just stick with me here for a second. So now what this does is it builds out, I can see without doing any coding, without doing anything elaborate, I just literally pump in some credentials and a product that I know, I can see what data I would expect from it, any service, right? I happen to pick inventory, this works to order status. So essentially I can come in here and be like, okay, when I put in this Starline SL234 PR, what data are they giving me and what's the structure of it? So a lot of times, if you're trying to communicate the requirements to a dev team, or if you're a BA or a project manager, you can come in here and be like, look, you know, Starline provides all this basic level of information, has the product color, the part ID, the name of the product, and how many they have in inventory, no problem, right? Tells me if it's manufactured to order, there's this basic level of information. But then at the same time, I now also provide where this inventory is located. Right, all 6,100 of these units are in my Grand Island Buffalo facility. And then it goes through, I have all this future availability of inventory coming in. So yes, there's 6,125 now, but in 11 days, I have another 45,75. In another 15 days from that, I have 49,75. And it shows you this future availability. The reason I use this example and showing this type of data, obviously those of you who are doing anything in the industry for the last year, realize the supply chain is jacked up. So these types of tools, this future availability has a lot more value now than maybe it did um, just a year and a half ago. But back to the original you know, purpose of this, the whole gamut here is for you to be able to pump in test examples, test products. If you have a favorite hit or PCNA or Sandmark product or Alpha product, just blast in the product code with their credentials, make sure you have their endpoint and you can see the data they respond to without having to go through initially and developing a whole tool set of, you know, an implementation where you're storing this data, just a quick down and dirty way to test data responses. And what its initial phase was to test about the uh, validity of an endpoint. Um, just one more example of this you know, looking at this, a very similar uh, request. So this is the order status 1.0 service where you get all the order details of Starline's, you know, order status service. So same deal here. This is an example where I blast in the web service version. I have the username, my demo password that will change soon. Uh, query type, which is just one of the request parameters. So basically this says query type one and I happen to know is the uh, distributor purchase order number. So I blast in this test purchase order number and it gives me some data responses, right? So I'm gonna do that same get up here and come back to this, pull this away. And now we have what you would expect to see from a star line or, or any order status response, you know, that's fully functioning. Uh, just, I use this one as an interesting example. Uh, the concept of PO splitting, which is very, very frequent in this industry. So um, this test order was sent to me and it was split into two separate orders. And so now I, in my world, in Starline's world, I have it as this ID and this ID and they can have, you know, different ship dates, all that fun stuff. But this just happens to show you that order statuses aren't a one-to-one, -one, like as you might anticipate in the real world, they're a one-to-many relationship. Now the kind of not so great part about this is, you don't know what line items are in each of this in the split that I did. But fortunately, the order status 2.0 service that I detailed last month in the education session, which is flushing its way through, it's out of alpha and into beta. It's been in the middle of a lot of beta testing right now. Hopefully in the next month or so, that thing is gonna be hitting the ground running, which has adds line item details to order status responses. So having said that, you know, it's a this is just going back to show you. There's easy ways without writing a single line of code to test endpoints, test data, and just figure out what you're up against before you go and you know, build out an integration strategy for this whole thing. So back to the Rhino, let's see where we're at here. Um, 
All right, so we did that. Uh, that's the, if you hit the QR code there, it'll obviously work in the recording. And if you remember, you know how to get to it. Um, that's that. And like I said, my password's gonna change soon. Uh, I plugged this earlier and I was actually as involved as I think I am in promo standards. There's a, uh, Aaron and his crew are doing an awesome job building up best practices, right? I said, they're the ones reining in the beast. Um, they have built out a complete set of really onboarding documents and question and answers. They're tackling one standard at a time, but they have overall best practices. They've built out an entire site. And they, for those of you who've been around doing this for a while, you might not know this exists. And it's pretty awesome because I went through it for the last few days and Aaron and the crew are doing a pretty solid job making sure this happens. So they've built up best practices. If you're a distributor or consumer, if you're, you know, kind of what should you be doing overall in terms of strategy for both? And if you're a supplier building endpoints, what are the best practices that you should do there? Uh, I'm not going to read these to you because I think it's important that you, you know, go and experience this for yourself because there, it's literally pages of, of great documentation. But to show you kind of some examples, here's an example of their supplier integration strategies and distributor integration strategies. So they literally go through, you know, rollout strategies, integration considerations. What, what do you do about call philosophies? Uh, call velocities, how do you, you know, uh, logging, auditing, uh, how, what's the process to set expectations with the consumers of your data? Uh, you know, I think distributors have a different problem is what happens if I call Starline service and it times out or it's not available, you know, they go through the concept of retry logic and what's the best way to do it. And then on the flip side, the supplier's, you know, equivalent of ret retry logic is controlling the, vo the request volume, right? So, our endpoints get hit, I think about 49 million times a year. And if we didn't have caching and scaling and some of those other tools in place, we just get continually destroyed. So the general concept here is we have built out these best practices and continue to. So I'd stay in, if you're in the loop here and y'all can access all of these integration strategies, check it out. I don't wanna you know, belittle anybody and read them to you. There's great stuff in there. Uh, and good job, Aaron and crew. And I know that, you know, your crew, uh, your whole committee keeps growing and building this out. So good stuff. Uh, the next question that we get is, you know, the whole make or buy. Uh, you know, I get this a lot. It's like, well, I don't have, I don't have a person. I don't have a team. I don't have a, you know, an army of an IT staff. So basically, you know, the question is, what is, what do I really need? So no, you don't need a team but you do need some IT resources. Now, that, don't worry, next slide is, what if you don't have the resources? So just hold your horses for two minutes. Uh, so you have to have some sort of base level of IT resources if you want to build this yourself, right? Now, you don't have to build it yourself, we're gonna get there. Uh, I think it's important to understand your data and where it comes from, right? Because just because you have some IT peeps, they might not have control or access to your data. Like, the dude, you know, setting up a new mouse and keyboard and you know, a monitor at your desk might not be the right person to query your database and know the sources and, and inventory chains frequency, right? So just, you know, I it's just make sure that if you have those resources, you know, you you, you know if you have this guy, gal, or person. Um, at the end of the day, you can know where all your data comes from, but you have to have access to it, right? So like some systems don't allow you access to your database to manipulate data and some probably shouldn't. So you should make sure that you can read your inventory data or have some sort of way to, to pull this stuff out. Um, and at the end of the day, you need to be able to make or develop on an infrastructure that can handle millions of requests a month. Uh, when I say, you know, this is not something where you just put up there and hope for the best and you just hope that, you know, I mean, looks. Uh, you know, Staples, the earliest adopter of promo standards, they will generate 20 to 30,000 requests a week on your endpoints, right? You just have to, and that's where Aaron and his team address that, the, the scalability, keeping that in mind. So now, good news is, what if I don't have someone else to, have to do this? So from a, and look, I, uh, these six companies are up here because they're very active members of promo standards, and they're very trusted affiliates of promo standards and I guess, you know, carriers of the brand. Uh, there are others, 
uh, if those others want to become members, I'll put your logos up here too. Um, so if you're a supplier, the, these three companies, Essent, DC, through their one source program and Extend Tech, are the largest um, host and developers of endpoints today. I think, like I said, DC just added 150 product data endpoints. Uh, Essence has been a long OG of hosting order status and inventory and all the other statuses. And Dino and Sam and crew are building out one NetSuite implementation at a time and hosting quite a few uh, endpoints. So these companies exist out there. They are experienced. You don't have to explain to them what promo standards is, right? That's always a hurdle to get over. Um, and then on the consuming side, there's, look, if you're at the end of the day, like, look, I want the benefits of promo standards, but I don't want to develop all this stuff. Well, there's platforms and groups and companies that have already built these tools into their software, right? They're pulling order statuses every day. They're pulling inventory. They're pulling shipment data. They're building out entire company store platforms based off of promo standards data. So, you know, you don't have to start from square one. There are companies that are doing this. Um, so... And if you're curious to others, look, get engaged in our Slack community. Uh, there, I tend to find the people who own these platforms tend to be the most active in the community uh, for all the right reasons. But, you know, I think you don't have to have a person to develop this yourself. There are people doing this, but very much if you want to a la carte, do this yourself and, you know, run with your own data and your own system, you know, we have the support community to do that. Um, then lastly, just attend our events. You can connect to the community and, and find that there are probably 20 other companies like this that are offering support and services along the way. Um, all right, a few more slides here. So now what? So this was, I've shown this slide a few times. This is about to happen in two weeks again. Um, we have committees that get together and back to the, you know, community involvement side of it. This is our standards committee who's actively developing the order status 2.0 and point, right? It's, it's a volunteer effort. And if you want to get involved, by all means, please get involved. You don't have to be a developer. You don't have to be an IT guru, right? We have a uh, marketing work group. We have tons of educational work groups that, that we can plug you in. Um, but I think your first step is membership. So I, I kind of went through my five tips that we're going to leave, take away, and then we're going to hop over some chat and questions because there's a million of my, there's a few of my C. Um, look, you don't have to spend a billion dollars to become a member. 500 bucks a year is nothing in the grand scheme of things in terms of what you're spending on your IT resources. I mean, that's 500 bucks you'll ever spend. So become a member, get you access to all the stuff. That's one. Um, if you're new, I, I encourage you to find somebody that you do business with today to partner with to figure this out. Don't go and send a credential request to 300 suppliers and that you're going to overwhelm yourself. So if, you know, if you like doing business with hey, Sanmar, Starline, uh, Akron, anybody, you, you name it, whoever you feel comfortable doing business with, pick one. Pick one of you that has onboarding and experience with promo standards and try it out. You know, go through that process with them and then you start scaling it, right? You know, maybe you just skip right to the service provider, which that works, but don't take, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? Don't, don't go after the, the full elephant on the first shot. Uh, like I said, to my point, this might be a service provider, right? They're out there for a reason. They provide great services. Um, next thing is start simple. Right. I think my two examples of inventory and order status are the quickest ROIs that are out there uh, and they're easy, honestly. And I would say today in the jacked up supply chain world have the most immediate value. So definitely do that. Um, I think pe people tend to fail here on an implementation strategy, even from a business processes to a IT process, just an IT infrastructure building kind of have a plan going into this. If you're just gonna ad hoc wing it the whole way through, you might find yourself to be a little disappointed. Uh, and then last, my big last plug is get involved and attend our events. Like we're going to Tampa, we're gonna have 150 plus enthusiasts, technology, business leaders, IT leaders, industry leaders at an event in Tampa that we anticipate to sell out very quickly. That's where connections are made that you will 
be able to benefit from everything going forward. You know, you'll be on top of the ball. You'll know exactly what's coming down the pipeline. You'll be part of the pipeline, uh, which is where Promo Standards really thrives. So having said that, we're going to open up the questions in a few seconds. Um, like I said, we do this on the third Tuesday of every month, uh, just because, just because. Uh, so we've, we've gone through three now. If you kind of see the next eight or nine education ev uh, events that are coming up next week, we get to the, the granddaddy of them all, the old uh, configure purchase orders. And then we get into everybody's biggest topic of how to configure a purchase order with product data 2.0. And we kind of go through all of that. So having said that, I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to hit the Q&A if it hasn't been done. All right, first one, so Melinda's been patiently waiting since 159. Um, what programs Promo Standards integrates with? Is it Sage or QuickBooks? I'm gonna tell you, it's definitely not Sage. Um, and then on the QuickBooks side of things, so Promo Standards is not software, right? It's a set of standards. It's a set of um, open protocols that allow suppliers and distributors and, supply and service providers to communicate. What you will find, though, is people who are using Promo Standards in their software have made quick and easy integration pieces back to QuickBooks. So if you're using Comments View, who's sucking in your Promo Standards data, they then have an integration back to QuickBooks. Same thing with Essence, same thing with all the software providers. So it's not a direct connection, um, but if you're looking for that, there are people out there who have made those plug-in pieces along the way. Uh, oh, Shopify, I love this question. Uh, we get Shopify questions a lot. Um, so I know, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, there are, um, there are two or three firms actively trying to solve the Shopify to Promo Standards plugin. And I guarantee you that the second they have them available, they will make it widely known. But yes, this is, I, I've probably mentioned this at every other education session, if somebody can figure this out in the short term, they will crush it because um, there's a huge need to take. I know there are proprietary shop in plugins, right? So hit promo, hit, they have their own Shopify plugin. But is there a generic industry data back and forth? There are some in the works. And so table that question. We're going to come back to that one in hopefully a month. Um, how many suppliers use promo standards? The current number is somewhere north of 200. Um, that was kind of pre-DC days. Sherwood Central brought another 100 to the table. Uh, a great question, do anonymous attendee, uh, do I need a large IT staff? I address that, no. Um, Starline, right? We have uh, three developers on staff, right? Uh, one of them is uh, dedicated mainly to integrations. You don't have to have a Sanmar or Alpha or IT staff like that that's a fallacy in all of this this is not rocket science it's integration work which is very tested tried and true technology so and if you're not comfortable with a one or two person staff that can handle this there's people to pay to do and then there's people who just host the entire experience for it so there's somebody uh Andrew just connected in in the chat and he said they did it all with one IT guy who also does IT help desk. It's very easy and we've done it before. So there you go. So if you're curious, anonymous attendee, um, whoever answered, oh, Dion, that question, Andrew, hit up Andrew in the chat and he can probably connect with you. And he looks like he's got a story there. So yes. Oh, great, anonymous attendee. So the best part about attending an event being overwhelming, we are attend, our our event is not 100% focusing on promo standards, it's focusing on industry technology education, but there will be a promo standards component of it, but you will find out that this is not a gathering of the nerds by any stretch of imagination once you get to know these people. And we are going to make a very inclusive, um, inclusive environment to make sure that we're connecting first time attendees with some of the OGs who've been to every one of these events since its inception. So don't worry about not speaking the language. Uh, I would say half of us don't speak the language, right? We just kind of figure it out. Um, yes, anonymous attendee. Anonymous attendee is coming in with some doozies today. Um, 
our industry is not simple, right? I get it's very much not simple. Um, I don't know. Stop sharing my screen so you guys can see me. Um, our industry is not simple. It's pretty complicated. Kits, yes. Um, kits are complicated. Here's my general take: is for the up until last year, my take was let's just solve the other 90% of the industry's problems and leave kits behind. But I think the kits have now become more than the 10%. So kits are a, are a solvable problem using PPC accurately. Um, what I will maybe, maybe I'll have this, we'll add this as a side education piece is for those of you who have seen this done, Eric Schoenbarger from HIT and maybe Raj will do it now. Uh, they do an excellent kitting walkthrough example using product price configuration and converting that to purchase orders. So it's complicated, but we have a data model that works for kitting. I think the challenge right now is getting every supplier onto that universal data model experience because internally we all do kits differently because a lot of our systems were made to do single SKUs. And once we start puking 17 SKUs with different packaging instructions on top of them, it gets even more complicated. So yes, it's we will add a separate, call it a 10 minute webinar clip, just pre-recorded and make sure we hit that exam. Cause it's, I've seen it, it's done. Yes, uh, the old rest for soap, we wouldn't have made it through an education session without this question. Um, so. Part of our promo standards roadmap is what we call promo standards 3.0. What's the newest technology of promo standards? Look, the converting data from, from REST and SOAP back and forth is two, three lines of code. Um, if that were the answer, I think we would have been there already. Honestly, I think we're looking at is REST even the right answer for promo standards in the future? versus a, is GraphQL a better alternative? We actually have members of the technology committee and promo standards is actually uh, hiring a consulting company to look into this and really get the next iteration for what the right technology is. I agree, it's SOAP is, has a lifetime, a lifespan. I don't agree that the slam dunk answer is rest. So good question, Zach. Joel, doozy, Joel gets all the good questions. Um, what is happening with PPI and Pro standards? Are they still supporting? Um, PPI has its own technology partner uh, who is in charge of, you know, they run a business. Um, we have, you know, we actively invite all participants of the industry to participate. If you want to be anybody can become a member if you're in the promotion products industry. So we have reached out uh, and invited and in, you know, that message of inclusion to PPI and their technology partner. Uh, and they are more than welcome to join as a member and, and be involved in the uh, technology process that we have. Okay, uh, next one, HD. How many of them offer full sets of data, full suites of data, that's what you're getting at. Last check, it was something I would say, well, the, the limiting factor is the invoice service. If there's 20 people doing invoices, then my guess is there's 19 people who offer the full suite. On the data side, back to the purchase order, the number used to be 51, 52, right? So it's not just six suppliers who are doing the full suite of promo standards. So more and more suppliers during the pandemic have gotten on with the with purchase orders because of the sheer demand that's out there for it. So, and more and more service providers have come along and spun up these services in a matter of hours for them. So there are quite a few now. Good question, HD. Proofing, haha, <laughs> I love the, uh, Brandon's proofing question. Um, so proofing is actually gonna be solved in order status 2.0. If you wanna go back in the way back machine the last month, I talked on, I talked about this. It's on a recorded webinar. You can reach out to Jessica and she can get you the link. Um, but yes, the order status 2.0 is more of an interactive pushing data, resolving issues. One of the issues with program orders is there's a proof. Uh, issue resolution is a huge component of order status 2.0. So got that one. Yes, tokens. Where is this? William, what Diane, I'll come back to you. Um, 
weeks for yes so will 99.9 .9 percent of all suppliers issue the same set of credentials to ac access all of their endpoints um, my guess is if anybody's more granular to that they're handling it internally uh, not externally so if your data i would say you're safe assuming that your data model has one supplier set of credentials for all their endpoints. If somebody sees, if, if that's an incorrect statement, somebody can correct me in the chat, but I've rare, I, I've, I've maybe seen one in five years. Uh, so that's Will's question. Yeah, Diane, data dictionary. This is great. Um, that's a great question. I'm gonna actually kick that over to the best practices committee to just come up with a one pager of, I guess, acronym solving for all this talk. But yes, I think we tend to speak in acronyms, unfortunately, just assuming that everybody knows them. But yes, that's a great feedback. Give us a month or so, and we'll kick out a data dictionary slash glossary, kind of the, you know, what this means and promo standards talk. All right, I know we're going a little long, so if you want to hang around, I'll, I'll keep answering questions as long as they're around. Um, Yes, this is recorded. Um, we record it and we post it on our YouTube channel. Jessica will send that out and call it, I don't know, a day. Um, adding examples, yes, 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 yes. Adding examples, documentation. Um, I'm assuming that the best practice committee is starting to tackle this. Um, they are specifically tackling required suggested unrequired fields, right? I think anybody who's implemented this said, man, if everybody would just give me this piece of data, everything would be so much easier. So the best practices committee is doing that. We will try as we develop new standards, they call it order status 2.0 to include example responses in the documentation or at least you know some of the downloads themselves. We did it initially with the first two inventory services and it got to be kind of a heavy lift when there was only three or four entities working on this. But now that there's 200 plus members, I figure I think we can muster up some better data examples and our oncoming services. So Eric and uh, Standards Committee, that one's on you. Uh, and as attendee is back. Um, for someone that doesn't have a developer experience to start as an IT guru, is there a visual video walkthrough to help explain what this would look like from a data model? <clears throat> um, short answer, no. But I don't think that it's outside of the realm that we could do this. I think the this is my initial question. Back to my initial thoughts: find a a partner in your supply chain that is doing promo standards. I feel like, look, as a company, we have a very vested interest in making sure that this is successful because there are so many ROIs to our automation of the supply chain here. So. If you reach out to one of you know the right entity for you in your organization, if not, uh, hit up Jessica and we'll add this to our docket and see if we can get one of our committees or work groups to tackle the kind of walkthrough of that data model because I, it, you know, I know Eric Alessi and the guys at our crew at Ascent love the concept of data modeling. They might actually be a good uh, home for you. Or the DC crew has unlimited amounts of uh, experience with this data. <clears throat> ah. HD is back. Do we have a forum area? We could go and ask around. Yes, Slack channel. Become a member. Jessica will send you an invite for Slack within a few hours, and you'll be off to the races. So we have a, as I said, as of last night, there's 268 members in Slack. So that's that. OK, I answered all 18 questions. HD says we're good to go. Uh, something else. Integration knows that some fields are nil. Um, will direct message me. Um, yes, the let's have this conversation offline. We'll get some of our uh, one of my guys here. Uh, we run into the null, nil, the whole nil values. Yes, what's required in order to get an accurate response is or we run into a lot, should I leave this empty or should I take the elements off? Should I pass in null? What do I pass in for values that are not required? Um, Cause I think there, we have preferences of how we'd like to see that. Um, so hit me, if you're in Slack, will hit me up. If not, email me, it's uh, jnorris at starling.com. Um, like last name, Chuck Norris. 
All right, I did it. I answered, uh, I don't know, 19 questions. Sorry, we're six minutes late, but uh, look, I do this every single month, third Tuesday of the month. Like I said, we uh, keep an eye out for our education and uh, in-person events. And go sign up to be a member if you're not already. And this all becomes a lot easier and you get all the insights groups. So thank you, everybody. This has been great. Um, I love the questions. It makes this go by a lot easier uh, real quick at the end. And we get right to the point and it allows us at Promo Standards to know what things we could be working on in the future to help explain this a little easier to the community. So this is recorded. Check it out. See you guys next month.